Hey guys, Mr. Hill here, and today we're going to be talking about something that, believe it or not, it kind of ties in with um, with uh, the election that's going on today. Um, not exactly, but uh, some of the things that we're going to talk about today, you'll sort of, if you've been keeping up with the uh, politics of the last, uh, I don't know, 12, 16, 20 years, uh, I know that's much longer than most of you have been alive but those of us who have been alive we can kind of see some similarities in what's going on today um, with uh, what happened in Mexico back in the 1830s uh, so nearly uh, 200 years ago so um, <clears throat> what we're going to talk about today uh, two different things and I'm going to ask you to use your um, um, C notes that are in Google Docs um, and fill those out as we're going through the video. Uh, that means you're going to have to uh, probably do some stopping and starting of this video in order to get the um, to get the notes filled in. But that's okay because it's pretty simple and easy to do. So what we're going to be talking about today are actually two different things that happened um, in uh, at about the same time. And the first part of that is we're going to be discussing two different political parties in uh, Mexico in the 1830s. And you're going to see that those two different political parties kind of sound a little similar to what we have going on here in the United States today with our two political parties. So uh, what we're doing is, wow, why is this not working? There we go. Uh, <clears throat> The, today's set of notes are called Problems in Mexico, Federalists and Centralists, and the other part is called Texans Fight for Change. So the first one we're, we're going to talk, or the first thing we're going to do is we're going to look at some uh, key terms and one mini biography today. So you're going to need your key terms uh, packet and you're going to need your mini bios, uh, which luckily for you are all in one easy to use uh, Google Doc package. So. Uh, first key term is the term liberal. Now, no doubt you've heard this term before, and you've probably heard it used in uh, um, political speak. Um, a liberal is a person who wants to see change. Uh, a person who wants to see change. Uh, they want to see uh, changes in the government, maybe from one form of a government to another form of a government. All right? The flip side of a liberal is a conservative. Now, a conservative is a person who wants to limit change and keep things sort of the old way to, to maintain the status quo. That means to maintain the way things are going. Uh, so a conservative says no change. Our next key term is Texian. Now, today, here in the United States, we live in Texas, and we call ourselves Texans. But the Texans who were here when Texas, um, in the 1820s, 1830s, those Anglo-Americans who came to Texas uh, when it was controlled by Mexico, they were looking for a term to call themselves, and, and they, for the most part, settled on the term Texian. So you'll hear me say the word Texian sometimes. Sometimes I'll forget. I'll say Texan. But Texian is the proper term for an Anglo-American settler who came to Texas. Next, we have Tejano. Now, you've probably heard Tejano before. Tejano is a, is a type of music, a style of music that's very popular. Um, a Tejano was a name for a Mexican person who was born and lived in Texas. Uh, a male was a Tejano, a female was a Tejana. So Tejano, Tejana, uh, Mexican, uh, Texian was an Anglo-American. All right, convention. A convention is a, delega uh, a meeting of delegates uh, for discussion of and action on matters of concern. Now, an example of a convention would be to think about um, here in the United States, prior to each presidential election, the 
uh, members of the Democratic Party, they hold a convention where they nominate um, their their um, person who's going to run their candidate, the person who's going to run for president. And then the, the Republicans have one also. Um, instead of everyone in the United States going to one big, huge meeting, which would be just logistically impossible, what they do is each state elects representatives and these representatives go to this convention and they cast their vote for a certain number of people that they represent now the people who are that represent all these other people they're called delegates a delegate is just a person who speaks for a group uh, sort of like a representative a person who speaks for a group now our first and only mini biography today is Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana. Now, I know you've heard the name before, Santa Ana. Um, Antonio Lopez de Santa Ana uh, will actually, we'll, we're going to have plenty to write about Santa Ana. So you may want to write smallish because we're not only going to have this, but we'll have some more when we talk about the actual Texas Revolution, which is part of this unit. Uh, Santa Ana was a Mexican general who was supported by Texians. I see right there, I said Texans, but what I should have said was Texians. He was a Mexican general who was supported by Texians. He was the leader of the Federalist Party in Mexico. And as the leader of the Federalist Party, he overthrew the centralist party that was in control and he became the president of mexico so santa Ana, mexican general who was supported by the texians he was supported because he was the leader of the federalist party and the texians loved the federalist party and he overthrew the centralist party and he became the president of mexico now Honestly, that's really the only good things we have to say about Santa Ana in Texas history, and you'll find out a little more about that later on. So, um, look at the notes um, from uh, from your um, uh, your C notes that are in Google Docs, and then you're just going to follow along with this. Okay. Our first thing that we're going to do is write our essential question. You know where to type that in. What was the difference between the centralist and federalist parties in Mexico? Our essential question today, what was the difference between the centralists and federalist parties in Mexico? Okay, now you're going to whoa, you're going to notice that your C notes today uh, are actually uh, is or, sort of an organizer. It's sort of a uh, you've got two columns and we're going to write the differences between two uh, the two political parties the federalists and the centralists okay so first things in box number one the federalists were mostly supported by the poor and lower classes um, of mexico so the poor and lower classes are the main supporters of the federalist party so since these two sides were pretty much polar opposites, who do you think is in charge, uh, or who do you think were the supporters of the centralist party? Well, if you said the poor and lower class, you're wrong. Instead, it was the rich and those of mostly full-blood Spanish uh, who were the main supporters. So federalists, poor and lower class, the centralists were supported by the rich and those who were mostly Spanish. Okay, number two. <clears throat> A federalist believed that the central government and the state governments should share power, like in the United States. Because here in the United States, we do have a central government, a national government that's headed by the president, and we have Congress, and we have the Supreme Court. But we also have state government governments. And in the state government, we have the governor, uh, we have a state legislature, a, uh, you know, Texas State Congress, Texas House of Representatives, Texas Senate, um, and, and we have our own court system. And the deal is, honestly, 
most of the rules that we live by on a day-to-day -day basis don't come from the national government. They come from state and local government. So the, the, the central government, the national government of the United States has certain powers, but it shares certain powers with the state governments. So the Federalists, like I said, they supported a government where the national government had power, but the states had a lot of power also. And, and Texians love this because that's very much like the United States. Whoops. Now the centralists, they didn't believe in sharing power with state governments. The centralists believed in a strong central government where you had one government that basically made the rules for everybody in all the different states and all the different towns. In a federalist form of government, the states hold most of the power. They're the ones who make the laws that affect the people on a day-to-day -day basis. In a centralist government, the states have very little power, and most of the power resides in the national government. <clears throat> Excuse me. In a federalist government, it was favored by the liberals. In other words, the federalist government was favored by those who wanted to see change. The centralist government, uh, the centralist form of government, was favored by conservatives, people who did not want to see change. Uh, Federalists believed that the power should be in the hands of the people. Centralists believe that the power should be in the hands of only a few people who are uh, qualified to lead. They don't trust giving the people the opportunity to decide for themselves because they feel this, the, the people will make poor choices. Um, and then uh, the Federalists were led by Santa Ana and they were favored by the people of Texas, the Texians and Tejanos. Uh, they believed in the Federalist form of government. The centralist form of government was opposed by Texas. They believed that the centralist form of government was the government of a dictator where just a few people were ruling and it took the power out of the hands of the people. So that kind of gives you a breakdown of federalist versus centralists. And you can kind of look and see that they kind of compare to the Democrats and the Republicans. Now my question to you is federalists and centralists. If you had to say one or the other was more like the Republicans or the Democrats, which one would you say was most like a, the Democrats' beliefs, and which would you say is most like the, the Republicans' beliefs? Okay, think about that a little bit. Okay, so there was conflict in Mexico, and here's the effect it had in Texas. A civil war broke out in Mexico between forces controlled by the centralists and forces controlled by the Federalists. And when this war broke out, it became a full-blown civil war in Mexico. Now, because there was so much fighting going on in Mexico, a lot of the soldiers who had been sent to Texas because of the law of April 6, 1830, remember, forces were sent to Texas because they believed that if there were soldiers, Mexican soldiers in Texas, watching what was going on, that the Anglo settlers would be less likely to cause problems and do things they weren't supposed to be doing. So when the fighting broke out in Mexico, all these Mexican soldiers in Texas were like, hey man, there's fighting down in the country that I live in and I'm a Federalist, I need to go down and I need to support my group. And then there were soldiers who were like, oh, I'm a centralist. I need to go down and fight for the centralist because it was a civil war. It was a war between two different groups in the same country uh, fighting in, against each other. So when these Mexican soldiers left Texas, it left the settlers in charge. Um, the Mexican soldiers were now gone and they, the um, American, the Anglo-Americans in Texas were like, eh, I guess we can pretty much do whatever we want. So they organized conventions to discuss the problems in Texas. Now, our summary is, centralists wanted a strong central government and weak states. Federalists wanted a central government and states to share power, to have equal power. Okay, so that kind of shows you what was going on in Mexico at the time. You. 
hopefully this was recording. So that goes ahead and shows you what was going on in Mexico at the time. A civil war broke out. And because of that, most of the Mexican soldiers that were in Texas, a vast majority of them, left Texas to go down and fight in the, the, the civil war in Mexico. So in Texas, our essential question would be this. Why did Texas settlers meet in 1832 and 1833, and what were the results of those meetings? So our essential question today, why did Texas settlers meet in 1832 and 1833, and what were the results of their meetings? All right, so there were two conventions. There was a convention in 1832 where Texans said, hey, we need to sit down, we need to talk about what's going on here, and we need to let Mexico know how we feel about what's going on here in Texas. We need to let the Mexican government know because, you know, how are we ever going to solve these problems? And you have to understand, most people at the time in Texas, many people still wanted to be part of Mexico. They weren't thinking about pulling out and being their own country. They were Mexican citizens. They were enjoying the good life in Texas. They were getting huge amounts of land. Uh, sure, they got ticked off with the law of April 6th, 1830. You know, forces were sent to Texas. Uh, immigration was stopped. Uh, they suspended land grants for impresarios. Uh, they started collecting taxes. Uh, on imported goods, then finally slavery was banned, and those five things are fists, F-I-S-T-S. -S. When you make a fist, you're ready to stand up and you're ready to fight. So the Texans felt that they were being pushed by the Mexican government, so they decided to have these conventions. And here's what happened in the Convention of 1832. The president of the Convention of 1832 was Stephen F. Austin. Now, Stephen F. Austin was like super Texan and super Mexican because Stephen F. Austin really, really loved the idea of taking his settlers into Texas and becoming these loyal Mexican citizens. He did everything by the book. He wanted to make sure that his citizens did their best to follow the laws of Mexico. You know, Stephen F. Austin, he learned how to speak Spanish. He, he, uh, he, he was following Mexican law. He encouraged his settlers to be Catholic and to do all the things that Mexico had asked of them because it was a really good deal. Now, in 1833, they had another convention, and the president of that convention was William Wharton. I don't even know who William Wharton is, to be honest with you. He's just a dude, but he got elected to be the president of the convention of 1833. So, in the convention of 1832, this is what was decided. They set some goals and they wanted to set these goals and they wanted to send these goals to the Mexican government and let them know what they wanted to see changed in Texas. First of those is they wanted to make Texas a separate state. Uh, they wanted to separate from uh, the state of uh, Coahuila y Tejas, which is, was uh, the state that was formed um, by the Constitution of 1824. Remember, uh, Tejas, or Texas, was mostly Anglo, and Coahuila was mostly Mexican. They wanted to open up the borders of Texas and allow Americans to settle in Texas again. In the Convention of 1833, they wanted to make Texas a separate Mexican state also. They wanted to let Americans settle in Texas again. They also asked for better mail service and they wanted money for schools because they believed public education is important. And yes, guys, it really is. Uh, some of the goals uh, continued for the Convention of 1833. The Texans wanted um, more protection against Indians. You know, the Indian problem didn't disappear when uh, when the Texas settlers got here. Um, it didn't disappear, and it wouldn't it wouldn't disappear for about another 45 years in Texas. Um, hostile Indian raids were a huge problem, and the Texans uh, begged Mexican government for help. 
with the with the, you know they didn't want Amer they didn't want Mexican soldiers here watching them and and uh, and making sure they didn't break any laws. But when it came to protection from Indians, the Texans sure wanted the Mexican army here to help them out with that. Uh, the Texans wanted reform in courts. Now reform means change. Texans were having to um, um, be tried whenever there was any type of court case, whether it was a criminal case or whether it was a civil case. A civil case is a case between two individuals, like if you're sued. Um, in, in those days in Mexico, in Coahuila y Tejas, um, if there was a court case, it was decided by a military officer. Um, and, you know, if you if you ran afoul of that military officer and you made him mad, you felt as though you could never get a fair shake when it came to a court case. So Texans wanted to see trial by jury where a group of uh, a group of individuals were selected and they would decide if you were guilty or innocent in a court case. So they wanted to see changes. They also wanted to make it to where English was the, the, the language that they could uh, well, there it is right here. They wanted people to speak English in business and law. Um, if you were a uh, an American who came to Texas and found yourself in legal trouble, you would have to learn to speak Spanish, or you better get a good translator to go in and work with you in court. Now, guys, this is something that we still see today here in the United States uh, because our court cases here in the United States are held in English. And if a person who doesn't speak English has to go to court, they have to get someone to interpret for them. It puts them in a really, really bad situation because, you know, who's to say you're getting good interpretation when, when that happens? So, uh, you know, this is a problem that was, it happened in, in the 1830s and it's happening still today, nearly 200 years later. So this is a pretty good indication of how uh, as much as things change, they still stay the same. Uh, and history tends to repeat itself, right? So the results. In the Convention of 1832, they put their goals, they put down all the information, that they, the, the things that they wanted, and they sent them to the government of Mexico. They sent them to the local governor of Coahuila y Tejas. And he said... I'm sorry guys, but your meeting is illegal according to Mexican law. So the, the government in Mexico, the government in, in Coahuila, they didn't even send the request to Mexico City. Um, the Texans went to all this trouble to have this meeting. They put their terms into a, a, a big uh, document and they sent it the proper channels. They sent it to the local government and the governor said, nope. Your meeting was illegal. I'm just going to tear these up, throw them in the trash. That's it. It's over with. So the Texans were pretty, they didn't rage quit or anything. They were pretty upset, though. So they planned to have another convention. And in 1833, they did, as we've talked about. And uh, the results of the convention of 1833, they wrote a new state constitution for Texas. In other words, they were planning on pulling Texas away from Coahuila y Tejas. They felt that they were going to be able to go to Mexico and say, hey, President of Mexico, who was who at this point? That's right, Santa Ana. They felt that they were going to be able to go to Mexico. They were going to be able to talk to some sense into the Mexican government, and the Mexican government was just going to say, oh, yeah, you're right. You know, Texas should be its own state. They weren't going to do that, but... You know, neither here nor there. They went ahead and they wrote a new constitution for the state of Texas, a Mexican state of Tejas. And instead of sending their wishes, their requests, instead of sending those to the governor of Coahuila y Tejas, they gave them to Stephen F. Austin. And they said, Stephen, they love you in Mexico. You're like super Mexican as far as they're concerned. You want to be you want everything to be right. You want to be part of Mexico so bad. They're going to believe you. They're going to love you. Would you please take this down and present it to the governor, the government of Mexico uh, in, in Mexico City and, and please get them to do what we're asking? So they sent Stephen F. Austin on the long trip from uh, Texas all the way down to Mexico City. So... Our summary, the Texians wanted Texas to be its own state and they wanted to allow immigration from the U.S. So that's about it. Um, 
hopefully you guys have uh, filled out your notes and everything's good. Um, we're going to be taking a quiz over what we've learned today, Federalist versus Centralist, and uh, Texans fight for change. Yeah, I think that's what we did. So we've got a quiz coming up on Wednesday. So uh, get these notes taken care of. Please keep up with your stuff this six weeks and uh, don't get behind uh, or else it's going to be hard to dig yourself out of that hole and we don't want you to fail the first, uh, the first semester of school. So that's about it. Um, see you guys later.